What is happening? My name is Gabe and today we're going to be talking about how you should be optimally testing creative across different paid social platforms so you can be able to get the most optimal returns on your marketing budget. Let's get into it. So when we're talking about creative, we're talking about videos, images, and carousel. You want to make sure that you have a wide array of deliverables so these platforms can be able to deliver an ad experience that is based off the audience's mindset at that particular moment. Facebook or Meta has an 86% confidence that if you have both videos and images, that you're going to be seeing an increase in performance because you have that wide array of ad deliverables that are optimal for where your audience is at that particular moment. So when we're testing creative, a big rule is you do not want to be testing a high volume of ad deliverables. You don't want 20 images, 10 videos, and 10 carousels. That's a lot of effort that you just put forth to making that all those creatives. And I have some bad news for you. You're only going to get budget to maybe three of them, maybe four, maybe four. So you're going to have a lot of wasted effort by producing that volume of creative. Instead, you want to optimize your time and strategize over making what we recommend four videos, three images and two carousel really pack the strategy in there and get applicable learnings from those creatives, have those creatives be high variance enough so that you can actually not only get learnings, but you can get growth because they are high variance and they are exploring an unknown. So when you're testing these creative, if you're familiar with ad structure across paid social recommended to simplify, you don't want to make a new campaign for testing. Unless if you're spending over $100,000 a month, you are going to more optimally spend your budget by having your testing done in the same acquisition top of funnel campaign if this is a top of funnel campaign test that you're doing. So have everything underneath the same campaign and have everything under the current ad set structure that you have right now and let everything go underneath that one particular ad set. If it's one ad set or if it's two, if it's more than three, I please, I highly recommend reach out to us for a free paid social audit because uh, most likely you're probably doing it wrong. So when you're testing underneath one ad set, uh, I know that the, a big fear could be, well, I'm not gonna get even budget distribution. I need to know that this is a good ad or a bad ad. I can't live with putting everything underneath one ad set and I want to do a split ad set and I want to give 50-50 to each ad that I'm testing because that's the true way to be to test. And I agree. I wholeheartedly agree. I have been down that road many times and I wish that life could give us true 50-50 tests in everything that we've done. I have some bad, bad, bad news for you. That's going to just slow you down. It is. And guess what? If your ad in that uh, test ca uh, campaign that you did that you set specifically for this, it's a winner. We win. And then you throw it into the big acquisition campaign and it flops. What was the point in testing it if it flopped? Unless if you have a huge applicable learning. Put everything underneath one ad set or as few ad sets as you can and let it rise to the top or let it sink. Now, I know what a lot of you are saying. My ad is good. My ad is good. It deserves more budget allocation. But if it's not getting any budget allocation, I've got some bad, hard news for you. Most likely, your ad sucks. Now, if it is getting low budget allocation, that's not to say that it is over with. And what I would do is run a stress test. And by doing a stress test, I mean turning off number two ad in terms of budget distribution for say a day or two, maybe even longer, and see where that budget goes. Most likely what's going to happen is it's going to go even more towards that top performing ad because there's a reason why you got so much budget allocation to begin with. But do a stress test for a couple days. Turn off the number two ad and if more budget goes down to those underperforming ads, 
it's going to help guide Facebook like, hey, it's doing pretty good with these impressions that we're giving it. Maybe we should give it more. If it does well, typically it'll, it will rise up. Now, the reason why I say turn off the number two best performing ad instead of the number one performing ad is like 90% of the time I've turned off a top performing ad because I wanted budget distribution to my sucky ad that wasn't performing. What happens is your CPA just goes up and up and up and up. I've seen like CPA like 4X uh, by turning off a top performing ad just so we can be able to give budget to a uh, underperforming ad and it crashed. It crashed. So I don't do that anymore unless if absolutely needed turn off the second performing ad, and do it for a day or two. If you're still not getting performance after two days, probably means that your ad sucks. So the best way to do this stress test is to be able to build out your campaign structure, to build out your ad structure with a labeling matrix. And the reason why is if you're doing dynamic ads inside Facebook, one, you don't get a ton of visibility into individual ad performance uh, in terms of acquisition. Uh, but two, you don't have the availability to pause an ad for uh, a couple days uh, or for even a couple hours. Uh, you have to delete an ad completely if you're doing dynamic. So what we recommend doing is doing a labeling matrix. And what a labeling matrix is, is you can see right here, is we individually label each video that's being tested. So say video one, and we're having three different headlines that we're testing. And then we would make video one with headline one, video one with headline two, video one with headline three. And say if we're doing video one, video two, video three, we would do those all and have a mix and match with different headlines as well. So by having that labeling matrix, we're doing the same dynamic ads that you would do with a Facebook's dynamic structure, except here we have much more insights where we can be able to look up how each individual ad is performing. So say if we wanted to look at video one, we can look at video one and get an accumulation of all of its ad performance across all the different tests. So if we're testing with different uh, headlines, different uh, copy, uh, different uh, variations of that video, uh, we can be able to just do video one and get an accumulation of performance there. Uh, and then we can also be able to easily pause to so say video one is that number two performer and we wanted to give budget allocation to video f uh, three and four. We can pause video two uh, easy to be able to do and we will not be having to delete any ads that you say you would with dynamic so in a way this gives you not in a way it does it gives you more control and it gives you more insights about your day over day performance so you can be able to make better decisions by understanding what's learning what's not and where you should be positioning your message in the future with your uh, paid social platforms now, if you're wanting to know how you can be able to read that data, I'd highly recommend checking out this video right here. We'll re break down how we analyze creative using all the metrics and probably some metrics that you're currently not using right now to gain those insights, to gain those learnings so we can be able to produce better messaging, better ads in the future and growth hack our performance.